Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and today we are going to speak about how to avoid the aircraft collision with terrain. Just around 40 years ago, Cefit was the main reason for aircraft accidents and thousands of people lost their lives. What? You don't know what Cefit means? I'll explain it to you, my friends. The term CFIT stands for Control Flight into Terrain, and it's actually the name of the aviation accident where aircraft was the perfectly airworthy and perfectly operative aircraft without any failures was flown directly to terrain under pilot control. The terrain itself may not be just mountains or high hills, but usually CFIT accidents happen there, but it also may be water or just ground. You may see some interesting cockpit videos on YouTube where pilots just fly their aircraft into the mountain area and then they start descent into the clouds, so they lost the contact with the terrain itself with those mountains, but somehow they land their aircraft in a safe manner. So how do we know the aircraft position relative to terrain? Well, there are some features that we follow and let me explain them to you. So my friends, let's imagine that we fly this airplane over some kind of mountain in a mountain area and we need to land at this airport in this runway. It's impossible to land from this side because of this huge mountain, but we can land from other side. And yeah, I'm not good at drawing. If you fly en route here, make sure not to descend below minimum en route altitude or below minimum obstruction clearance altitude, but usually not below MIA, so not below minimum en route altitude. That will help you to receive good a signal, radio signal from navigation aids and good signal for from air traffic control. If you fly off-road, make sure not to descend below grid mora, minimum off-road altitude. You may find it on every Jepson and road chart. But if you are within 25 miles range from the specific radio aid located on the airport, sometimes it could be more than 25 miles, but usually it is, you may descend to minimum sector altitude or minimum safe altitude. That guarantees the minimum obstacle clearance of 1000 feet. So here, let's submit 1000 feet and we are within 25 nautical miles out of specific, I don't know, VRDME here. Let's admit that we have mountain of 9000 feet high and you add 1000 feet more, so our aircraft is flying at 10,000 feet of altitude. And by the way, if you go through your transition level, you need to reset the altimeters for local QNH. That's the local pressure relative to main sea level. We are now maintaining 10,000 feet, but it can be forever. We need to descend and land on that runway safely. That is why we need to go through STAR, Standard Instrument Arrival Procedure, to follow standard arrival chart. Mostly every airport has arrival charts for it, for every runway. And here we have no exception, so we need to follow uh, our minimum safe altitude and we can enter initial approach fix at some kind of published altitude. Let's say we may descend to initial approach fix, well let's say it's en route fix, en route fix, and from this point we may descend to initial approach fix with the published altitude, let's say 9000 feet. So here we may lose some of the altitude. After initial approach fix, there is usually intermediate fix and then final approach fix, at which we usually intercept the glide slope if it's ILS approach and we we'll land on the runway. And there could be many points like this on approach chart, especially if it's Aeronav approach or Piranav approach. And it could be Oscar, Oscar, for example, 502, this point, or this point is Oscar, Oscar 501, etc., etc., etc. What modern satellite navigation, what modern aircraft gives us is the precise position, so we may follow the very strict and narrow route during our approach, and we may follow the published crossing altitudes 
which we may check on a pro chart and in our flight management system. So it's very, very safe to follow the routes like this. So every point has its own altitude restriction and speed restrictions sometimes. So for example, for initial fix or for this point, you need to reach 5,000 feet. The entry for your glide is at 3,000 feet. So like this, so you follow each restriction step by step. If you lost the satellite communication that you need or you lost your position, you need to climb to minimum safe altitude to that point again to reach it, reach it as fast as possible. However, if you have VMC conditions, so you see your runway, you see all the obstacles, you may continue visually, so you may request visual approach and land on the runway. In my country, you may request visual approach even during the night time. But if you have instrument arrival, do not descend below minimum safe altitude and below minimum crossing altitudes on your arrival scheme. The air traffic controller may also give you the special minimum vectoring altitude to descend. For example, they may say uh, descend to 5000 feet direct to Oscar Oscar 502. So you may direct to this point, but make sure to maintain the obstacle limit. So it's still your responsibility as a pilot to maintain those MSA and this 1000 feet uh, obstacle clearance altitude. Sometimes we have those minimum vectoring altitudes published now Jepson charts, but some airports, some unique airports just don't have those charts. But air traffic controllers may have them. If you are descending below the MSA towards minimum vectoring altitude under radar control, make sure you turn on the terrain mode on your navigation display. That will show you the terrain picture. So my friends, there are just few cases where you can descend below MSA. First one is you need to follow the published arrival profile and the published arrival route with all the restrictions and you can do it under IMC condition. The second variant is you may descend to minimum vectoring altitude under radar control. So under radar control you descend to minimum vectoring altitude and then you clear to final approach fix and you continue your instrument approach. But as a pilot you also bear responsibility for maintaining obstacle clearance altitude. And if you are in doubt whether the minimum vectoring altitude will be safe for you or you are in doubt in your position, just climb to minimum safe altitude and continue published uh, arrival route to your final approach fix. That will be much safer in that case. And the third variant, if you have VMC, just fly visually, maintain your own separation with terrain using your eyes as you were flying Cessna, Piper or any other type of airplane and you just make the visual approach and land on the runway. The problem with the visual approach is that it's not always available, especially in mountain area, the weather changes very fast. Performing the approach in mountain area may be a little bit challenging for a pilot. That is why the CRM is very crucial. So what will happen if you just violate this arrival profile and you just fly into this mountain. So you just put the final approach here direct into your flight management computer and the airplane just flow, will fly like this. So let's say this is five now. So this is five and you just fly from this point to final approach fix directly through the mountain. Will the airplane crash in that case? My answer is no. It won't crash because of the terrain awareness and warning system installed on every modern commercial airplane. The system name is TAFS. Terrain Awareness and Warning System. You may also hear the terms like G, P, W, S, Ground Proximity Warning System or E, G, P, W, S, Enhanced Ground, ground Proximity Warning System. In terrain mode on navigation display you may see different colors, red, orange or yellow or green and it just shows how high the terrain is in front of you. And Boeing 737 the highest is red, it's 2000 feet or more above the airplane altitude. The problem with old ground proximity warning system was that the data uh, for terrain was only received with the help of radio altimeter located just on the airplane. So if you fly like here 
and you receive the data, the terrain is very close, they will tell you pull up, terrain, terrain, pull up. You'll pull up, but you don't know what is next, whether there will be enough uh, vertical speed for you to overtake this mountain in a new enhanced ground proximity system. You understand well before that you have the terrain ahead and you have some caution modes on it like caution terrain or terrain in this case you just correct your flight profile there was a fatal Cefit accident happened to american airlines boeing 757 back in 1995 that aircraft was already equipped with all GPWS system which was which was working just with the help of radio altimeter and they received the signal just 13 seconds prior to impact and it wasn't enough enough vertical speed to overtake that mountain for now my friends it's almost impossible to get into that situation with the help of new generation of ground proximity warning systems which alert you as I said much earlier before the impact and if you won't do nothing if you won't correct your profile before the system will call you terrain terrain whoop whoop pull up terrain terrain whoop whoop pull up and there is no time to waste you need to act immediately for example my friends if you heard that warning on Boeing 737 first you need to disengage the autopilot then disengage the auto throttle aggressively apply maximum thrust roll the wings level simultaneously applying the pitch up to 20 degrees retract the speed brakes if they were retracted before if terrain remains the threat apply the pitch up to pitch limit symbol so called eyebrows or stick shaker initial buffet so you need to trade your airspeed for vertical speed but make sure you won't stall your airplane and do not change the airplane configuration with the gear or flaps monitor the radio altimeter and then you're clear of terrain just slowly decrease your pitch and accelerate the airplane the Boeing 737 is very powerful and it can overfly almost every terrain but mainly as every jet airplane for turboprop it's other story as you probably know i also used to fly turboprop airplanes before boeing 737 i used to fly atr 72 600 which is quite new and modern airplane and it has advanced uh, tough system which helps you to avoid terrain that system has standard warnings like terrain terrain will, will pull up but also it compares the vertical speed with the obstacle so at some point system realizes that we cannot overfly the terrain and it starts to generate warnings like avoid terrain to avoid terrain it means you need to turn I already drawn here to turn your airplane it doesn't give you the commands where to turn but you need to turn and of course it's very advanced system especially for under a little bit underpowered ATR airplanes what is the biggest problem with all of that alert systems is that it is a system that needs your airplane location and sometimes you may have problems with that there are some areas in our world where GPS satellite signal is very weak so I personally had some of the cases where I lost the terrain data on my aircraft on my navigation display later on little by little restored during the flight there are not too many areas like that but we usually overfly them on a cruising altitude on a cruising flight levels which is very high so the risk of facing the terrain is very low if you are in this terrain terrain whoop whoop pull up situation it means that you messed something before probably you descended below the minimum safe altitude or you deviated from the published route so these systems are final border to avoid see fit control flight into terrain so my point here guys is don't get yourself into this critical situation think ahead fly ahead of aircraft uh, good teamwork crm following the rules good airmanship will help you for sure hmm who is awesome guy you are so you need to follow awesome guy checklist first like this video then subscribe to my channel then ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for your attention and have a great time my friends i always read your comments and i try to answer 
to all of you. If you like this tech format, I can continue with it. If you like some other formats, please let me know in a comment section below. If you have some critics or propositions, please also let me know. Thank you so much.